In 2013, the best era for Manchester United ended, with Sir Alex Ferguson leaving after 26 years. The club's great moments were over, and everyone wondered what the future held for them. As the sun set on Ferguson era, a new dawn awaited Manchester United. The reins of management were handed over to David Moyes, a man tasked with the difficult challenge of succeeding a living legend. However, the team's performances weren't good enough. Many times Moyes set the team up not to lose, but the players were used to playing to win. In the defensive phase, Fellaini failed to support Carrick in the midfield. The opponent's strikers and midfielders took advantage of this. Also, Moyes didn't have a clear decision as whether the defensive line should defend, high or low. In the offensive phase, it wasn't different. Fellaini wasn't the man to take the ball forward. He usually played backward passes. That's why Rooney and Mata had to drop back to zone B to help Carrick in moving the ball forward. But when they were in zone C, they played long or diagonal passes. In some games, it was worse because the center backs played long passes to the strikers or Fellaini. Many players were angry with this approach. Rio Ferdinand was one of them and he declared. Under David Moyes, our main tactic was the long high diagonal cross. It was embarrassing. In one home game against Fulham, we had 81 crosses. I was thinking, why are we doing this? Andy Carroll doesn't play for us. The whole approach was alien. Other times Moyes wanted lots of passing. He'd say, today I want us to have 600 passes in the game. Last week it was only 400. Who cares? I rather scored 5 goals from 10 passes. That season Manchester United finished 7th and David Moyes was sacked. The following season Man United's board saw a coach with a distinct philosophy and game model, leading to the appointment of Luis Bengal. His style was based on possession and positional play, but no one expected it to be so boring, with many backward passes and sideways passes. Usually he played with three at the back, and the center backs were the ones who touched the ball frequently. Even though the Dutchman set up with Carrick, Matt and Rooney in the midfield, it was hard to progress with the ball because they were covered. Therefore, the center backs had numerical superiority in zone A and B. They were in charge of taking the ball to the opponent's half, but they could only play with the wing backs or strikers who received with the opposite goal at their back. So they had to play backwards to keep the ball. Even though Bangal tried to play positional play, most of the chances that Man United created were through crosses or runs from the strikers. His defensive approach was to defend with the ball. Most of the games they ended with more than 60% possession, but with boring draws. Under Bangal, many players didn't feel comfortable because they didn't have the freedom with the ball. And then Janusak mentioned one of the main issues with Bengal was that the players didn't understand his style of play. It was for me as a footballer, if you think about things too much, it can be a problem. You need to play with instinct. When the ball would arrive to me, I would have to think, what do I do now? There was no the same freedom or confidence. I needed a coach that would tell me go and attack players, but with him it was a slow passing game. Although Bengal secured the FA Cup in his second season, it wasn't enough for Manchester United and he was sacked the following day. The next season, the serial winner Jose Mourinho arrived at Old Trafford with the aim of playing to win and having a direct approach with the ball. In order to solve the creativity in the build-up, they signed Pogba and to have an attacking threat they brought in Ibrahimovic. In his first season, Pogba played a crucial role in taking the ball forward because when the team tried to advance by playing short, he had the ability to find spaces in small zones. But also, when the opponents left the spaces, he had great vision to find free players. While Ibrahimovic was a beast in the box, he was able to score with both feet, with his head and from long distances because he was always in the right position. 
His great movements and ability solved many games. These two players improved Man United. Therefore, in Mourinho's first season, they won three trophies. However, for the following season, Mourinho brought in players with different approaches. Matic was signed to cover Pogba's back in the midfield, while Lukaku came in to have a direct approach. As the season advanced, Mourinho changed the approach from last season. He focused on defensive solidity, which detracted from free-flowing attacking football. That season, Manchester United had the second best defense, but four teams scored more goals than Mourinho's side. However, Man United finished second and Mourinho said, I consider one of my best jobs of my career was to finish second with United, because people don't know what is going on behind the scenes. During that season, Mourinho suggested that the main problem wasn't the players or the coach, but the club's structure. You know, there are many of United players that left the club last season. See where they play, where they play, how they play, if they play. That's football heritage. In his third season, all these problems came up and they also lost their style of play. Many games the players were lost with and without the ball. For example, in season 16-17, Man United scored 104 goals and they had tactical variations to attack because 45 goals came in offensive transitions or with long balls and 41 goals with possession longer than 6 seconds. But in his last season, there was a big change since 12 goals were scored by offensive transitions and only 6 goals by possession lasting longer than 6 seconds. Besides, internal problems were raised between Mourinho and many players. Wayne Rooney mentioned, the big thing with Mourinho was the lack of communication with players. He didn't explain why you were on the bench and players need to know that, and many of them weren't happy with that. As a consequence, in December 2018, he was sacked. To revive the fans' spirits, Man United's board appointed Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, a name eternally related with Manchester United. The baby-faced assassin who once delivered on the pitch returned to Old Trafford with a great challenge to revive the glory days. Upon his arrival, Solskjaer emphasized his philosophy. We want to play the United way, attack, entertain and bring through the talented youth. That's what this club stands for. In his first full season, he brought in Juan Bisaka and Maguire to improve the defensive line. They did a great job, because last season United conceded 54 goals, but that season they conceded only 36 goals. However, in the build-up play, Solskjaer's side lacked creativity. Pereira, Lingar and Pogba couldn't create as many chances as the manager wanted. For that reason, he signed Bruno Fernandes and he injected creativity and vision into the team, transforming the dynamics of Manchester United's midfield. That season, the three strikers had great understanding between them and scored many goals. United finished third and people were excited for the future because young, talented players were performing well. To bolster the attack, Solskjaer signed Cavani and Van de Beek. However, initially they had limited playing time. Therefore, in the midfield, the manager decided to play with McTominay and Fred to be stronger in defensive transitions but these two players had troubles playing forward. Therefore, Fernandes and Pogba had the freedom to drop back and help in the build-up. Also, the fullbacks were important to attack the spaces or drag the opponent's defensive line. The strikers had the freedom to exchange positions to drag defenders. Besides, Cavani had great impact in the second half of the season by scoring 17 goals and helping in pressing. This freedom in the offensive phase helped United score 121 goals. 44 goals came by offensive transitions and 45 goals by possessions longer than 6 seconds. Man United finished second in the league and played the Europa League final. They were unbeaten away, but they had difficulties playing at home because the centre-backs and defensive midfielders were slow with the ball when the opponents played on a low block. The following season, United signed 
Barane, Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo in order to jump to the next level. Nevertheless, the team lost their football identity. The strikers didn't press as well as last season. McTominay and Fred's weaknesses were exposed. At the back, Maguire made mistakes and many times the Gea had to save his goal even from his teammates. In the build-up phase, it wasn't different. Many players were inconsistent. Fernandez was in a solo mission in creativity. Usually in the final third, they played crosses to Ronaldo and he saved them many times. The games that Solskjaer was in charge, United only scored 27 goals. Most of them came through offensive transitions. This shows clearly that United lost their identity. Since a season ago, the approach was different with many variations in attack. The main critics over Solskjaer were the lack of tactics in pre-games. His most used phrase before going to the pitch was enjoy yourselves and he was a stamp burn of always playing with McFred while he had players with different approaches on the bench. Solskjaer was dismissed in November 2021. The sport director Ralph Ragnick was in charge the months left and he warned United fans that it's crystal clear, it's not that difficult. You don't even need glasses to analyze and to see where the problems are, issues here and there, some minor cosmetic things. No, this is, in medicine you would see, this is an operation at the open heart. To Jürgen and Pep, I'm sure that they, they, they didn't, all the th didn't do all the things themselves. There were also other people involved. In an effort to resurrect the golden era, Eric Ten Hag arrived at Old Trafford. His Ajax side played free-flowing football that was based on possession, but as soon as he arrived, he mentioned, players dictate the way of play. His two first games were poor, however, with the signings of Casemiro, Eriksen and Martinez, he found the team. Last season, in the defensive phase, they pressed with four players in zone B. They were focused on covering the central channels and when the ball went to the sides, the fullbacks jumped to press. They forced the opponents to play long. Many times they recovered the ball in zone C and started the offensive transitions. The passing lines to the opponent's midfielders were usually covered and the center backs were close to the midfielders to intercept long passes. Nevertheless, when the opponent's center backs took the ball to zone B, Man United's midfielder was exposed because they had a numerical inferiority. Since the opponent's midfielders moved between United's midfielders and defenders, Casemiro was a key player to improve the defensive phase. He covered the spaces that the midfielders and even center backs left. He was the balance between the midfielders and the defensive line. Also, he was smart enough to cover the key spaces. In the offensive phase, Martinez played a key role in starting the build-up. Also, the midfielders were smart to understand the spaces. McTominay moved between Arsenal's strikers to create a passing line. The same happened when Rashford dropped back between Arsenal's midfielders. That's how they took the ball to zone C. Bruno and Dalo dragged Arsenal's players to create a space for Anthony. Martinez had the vision to find the free players between the lines. In the final third, they usually created triangles or applied the concept of the third man. They were coordinated in the build-up. The players that moved without the ball created the spaces for Bruno or the strikers. Therefore, they had positional superiority and received with the space, and the strikers attacked the spaces behind the opponent's defensive line. Moreover, when the opponents played in a low block, they had the tactical variation to apply positional play and try to attack through the half spaces. Another variation was to play long to win the second ball to attack the spaces with the wingers. The midfielders joined them and Man United arrived with seven players. Ten Hag's approach in big games was to play counter-attack. That's why Rashford, Garnacho or Sancho were the key players in those games, since Bruno and Casemiro played long balls to the backs of the opponent's fullbacks. With these tactical variations of applying positional play and using offensive transitions, Man United scored 108 goals, 42 had long possessions, and 51 with offensive transitions. They finished third in the Premier League and won a trophy after six years. However, this season, the players and Ten Hag seemed lost. 
they lack the same tactical variations and have lost their identity. This season people lay blame on Ten Hag, suggesting that he has inherited the least desirable aspects from the coaches who came before him. From David Moyes the lack of a game model. During this season we've seen that the team leaves many spaces in pressing when the midfielders support the strikers. The defensive midfielder has a lot of space to cover and this exposes the defensive line. Meanwhile in the offensive phase many times they don't try to play out from the back, even Onana plays long balls when he was brought to play another style of football, that's why Ten Hag got right of the head. Usually in the build-up the midfielders don't create passing lines and this led United to lose the ball easily. Also when players receive between the lines they try to play fast which forces them to lose the ball. Finally the midfielders usually play long passes to the wingers and this became predictable and easy to defend for the opponents. So far they've scored 40 goals and 21 came through offensive transitions which is very different from last season. This symptom was seen in Mourinho's and Solskjaer's era. Moreover, he's following the steps of Van Gaal in playing boring football. Many times he sets the team up not to lose, focusing on controlling the opponent, even sometimes the strikers are closer to their defensive line instead of being closer to the opponent's defenders. His poor communication with the players is similar to Mourinho's, where players felt disrespected by Ten Hag, like Cristiano Ronaldo, De Gea or Sancho. Several reports suggested that a broken dressing room played a role in Mourinho's departure. Finally, he's following the steps of Solskjaer by being stubborn with starting some players, for example Onana, McTominay and Anthony while he could try with different players from the bench. All these characteristics are following Ten Hag, and that's Manchester United's heritage. This video is brought to you by Play by Metric Sports, the fundamental tool for every coach and analyst. Create and manage all your video analysis in one platform. 